growing up, our teachers always asked us, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, as our phases change of life, uh, our ambitions change too. It kept shifting from one thing to another. Once I wanted to be an airplane pilot, there was this once I wanted to be an engineer. One year I even wanted to be a Pokemon trainer. Well, as we grew up, things faded away. We as kids always felt a deep connect to everything around us. We would talk to our toys, we would talk to our books, we would talk to almost everything that we felt connected to. As we grew up, that connect somehow got disconnected. What I noticed was, almost everyone around over here will agree to what I'm going to say now, is that this talk that we used to have with something close to us, it doesn't matter if it's only a person, it could be a, a thing or whatever, we lost that connect to everything. Slowly by slowly, when we were becoming disconnected, as I grew up, I realized that I was fading away as myself, as a person that I aspired to be when I was small. Although there was this one turning point in my life where the Archbishop, Archbishop of Goa, Father Philip Neri Ferrao, he came to St. Xavier's College and he told us this one story. This one story that has been stuck in my head for the last four years and that has been guiding me to do everything that I've been doing over these years. I am going to tell you that story now. This story is about two boys. They were walking along a road, Indian road, so there were potholes and water filled in it. And uh, one of the boys noticed that there's a scorpion about to fall into the water. So what he did was, he rushed to help the scorpion. The other boy stopped him and he told him, don't do that, the scorpion is going to sting you and is going to hurt very bad. This boy did not stop. He kept going. He picked up the scorpion and put, a, put it to the side of the road where it could wander off into the forest. As he was putting the scorpion down, the scorpion stung him on his hand. This boy cried in pain. His friend rushed to help him and he told him, I know the scorpion wasn't poisonous, but then it's going to hurt you for like a couple of days. You shouldn't have done that. The reply that boy gave was, the nature of the scorpion is to sting, but my nature as a human is to help. That was the turning point of my life and maybe many others in that very hall. That's when I realized that I had to do things for the world that not many other people were going to do. Because everyone feels that the world has abandoned them, that the world is taking away their own livelihood. Because we are pushed into such a system where we just want to study and get out and work till we die. We don't want to do anything for the environment. Well, as citizens of Mother Earth, we need to realize that we have a moral obligation towards everything and everyone around us. Well, there are two reasons why we are born. The primary reason is being kind, caring and helpful to others. And the secondary reason is to achieve our own goals and dreams. Well, sometimes we often confuse between the two and we put the secondary up first and we only think about ourselves. Well, no. The primary reason is being kind, caring and helpful to the others. Now, imagine a world where everyone would think the same way, would think that our primary reason is that and would come out and help everyone around them. That would mean that your goals would be primary for them that they would aspire to help you achieve your goals. So I would be willing to help all of you achieve your primary goal and then you would be uh, your secondary goal and you would be willing to uh, help me achieve my secondary goal. That's how we build a better world. Now to move on to the fact that the, the reason that I'm here is because of my Facebook page. Uh, many of you might know about it. Well, on this page we have done a lot of activities and we have uh, had many cleanup drives all across Goa. We, had, uh, we, we went and uh, fed the hungry people, the homeless people, and a lot of other things. Well, to start off with, the page was just created for fun. There was uh, no motto as such. We just used to post jokes. And we used to post some social messages to build up this consciousness that suppose like all these hundred people around here read that message. And if they start thinking the same way, then we could actually change the world and be better people. Once we hit 10,000 likes, this was 3-4 years ago, 
we decided that we'll go and clean up Mapsa bus stand because it was very dirty. Because people had forgotten their obligation towards Mother Earth. Because people had forgotten that this is, this is the only planet where life exists that we know of. And that this is where we can survive. This is the only planet where we can survive. And people do not realize this. People just throw away plastic from the buses, throw, go to springs and throw bottles and beer cans and whatnot over there. So we thought, let's start something that would change the usual way of life, that would make people see that there's someone doing something, because nobody was doing anything in those days. So we went, I announced on the page that, please come and join me for this cleanup drive. We had 10,000 likes. The first time I went to the Mapsa bus stand uh, in the morning that day, Sunday morning, eight people showed up, just eight out of 10,000. I was very disheartened. I expected at least 50, if not 100. And I was like, I asked the others, do you guys want to go ahead and do this? They were like, yeah, let's do this. Because they wanted a change. They didn't want to be one of those people who just sit back and say, oh, you know what? There's no one here. Let's just go back. Let this go. It was a bad idea. These people told me, they're right here in the hall right now. And they told me, let's go and do this. We went, we cleaned up the whole bus stand. We collected about 20 sacks full of garbage. We did not stop there. That was the start of a revolution. We cleaned up the Panjim bus stand. Then it went to other places. We cleaned up different dams. This is the picture from three years ago where we cleaned up the Mapsa bus stand. This is the Panjim bus stand picture. And then it went off. Well, our major breakthrough that put us on that world stage that you can say was during the ISL matches. We went for the first game and we noticed that the stadium is left in ruins. 19,000 plus people on every seat uh, grabbing coke, Pepsi, flags, banners, what not. Just shoved all that garbage under the, under the seats. 19,000 people and that much of garbage in that whole stadium. We saw all that and we were very, very disheartened. So we thought, OK, let's do something about this. The reason we came up with this idea is because we saw on Facebook that some Japanese fans had cleaned up the football stadium after the World Cup back in 2012. So we said, why not go and do something like this over here? We announced on the page again. It's a huge stadium if you go to see. And we announced on the page, and we were there waiting with the banner saying that, please come to this stand and help us clean out the stadium. We had 14,000 likes, and there were three of us there. Nobody else. Just three of us in that empty stadium full of garbage. We looked at each other. We said, OK, it's just three of us. I think it's just going to be another Mopsa bus stand thing. These guys are like, OK, let's go ahead and do this. So three of us set out cleaning the whole stadium, and it took us two hours to finish up with almost the whole stadium. We cleaned up the east stand first, we went to the north, and we went to the rest. And then the cleaning staff joined us late. And thanks to the help with, from them, we managed to clean up the entire stadium. These are some of the pictures. Under every seat, there was this much of garbage. That's one box collected there. And these are the banners of the team we love so much. Uh, under the seats and under our feet, people were walking all over them. Well. The first day, we had three people joining in. We posted that on Facebook. We got a huge response. I thought, OK, maybe the next home game, there'll be 10 people. Well, the next home game, there were 50. And the next home game, there were 150. And by the time the ISL ended in the first season, almost everybody used to pick up their garbage and put it in the dustbin that was close by. That was the start of a revolution that we started back in Mapsa, and it changed the entire face of the ISL. This was retweeted by a lot of government officials. It was also taken up by other team fans. It was done in Chennai. It was done in Northeast. It was done almost all over the, all over the country. That was an achievement, I feel. And that was not it. Cleaning drives was not the only thing we wanted to do. We wanted to do something even more than that. So we organized public talking drives where people could come, 
sit and talk to each one of us. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how old you are. You could just come, it was, it was held at Miramar Beach. You could come there, you could sit with us and you could talk about absolutely anything. We started this because I felt that this connect that we, ha that we have with each other has been disconnected. So to bring that back in, we had this talking drive. After that, uh, one of my friends suggested that we should have a hunger drive where we, could, we would go out and feed more people, the homeless people that are all around Goa. I said, okay, so we started doing this too. Well, the problems that we faced is that people used to tell us that this will encourage begging and that uh, it would only tell them to be more lazy and not be hardworking. Well, we did not only go and feed the hungry people. Yeah, these are the smiles that we got to see when we went to feed them. We did not only go and feed them, but we went and talked to them and told them the importance of this whole community that is there. And we made them feel not like an outsider because almost everyone does that today. It doesn't matter where you come from, uh, they're going to judge you from the place you come. They call people from the guards, ghatis, and they're like, we don't want you guys in Goa. Well, these are the only laborers that have built these places. We're sitting in this AC hall, it's probably built by a ghati right now. So yeah, thanks to them, we have this hall. And thanks to them, we have all the other infrastructure that is in Goa. Well, a lot of other things, and a lot of smiles, and a lot of blessings from all these people. There you have the kids. They would run to us and the smiles that they would give, uh, I cannot describe it in works, words. This was another one that was at Mapsa and these are some of them. There was this one crazy moment I would like to tell you about is when uh, one of our drives was featured on the newspaper. And one of our drives was featured on the newspaper and you can see a picture there of this man. He is their friend and we had fed them earlier during Christmas. They somehow found that newspaper and he found his picture on it and he kept it with him for about six months. After six months, when we went out to feed hungry people again, homeless people again, we, he came to us and he told us that I, I've seen you guys before, I met you guys before and I have a picture of me on the newspaper thanks to you guys. So that was the first time ever his picture came on a newspaper. There he is. And this is his friend who was showing us the picture. So that was such a touching moment and that told us, you know, this does not stop here. This has to go on. That it has to transcend boundaries. It doesn't have to stick to only cleaning or only talking to other people. It has to go to everyone. And that's why my whole talk is about changing the world. That the only way you can change the world is to think that you can. Because Everyone faces problems. Even during the cleaning drives, people told us that you should not be doing this. This is not your job. Why are you cleaning up the place when someone else is going to go and dirty it again? Well, what I would like to say to you is, if we don't start somewhere, no one else will. We also had a small cleanup drive at GEC. Uh, we had a cleanup drive at GC. I can't find the, find the pictures here. But if you go to the canteen after the stock is done, if you're tired, you would see that the canteen premises are very clean. Well, the TEDx team contacted me and they said, would you like to come and clean the place with us? So we came, we announced it on the page, and we had 30 volunteers cleaning the whole place up. Thanks to you guys from GEC, that was accomplished. Well. You can be a nihilist about things and say that, you know, everything's going to end and what you do is not going to matter. And that the place is going to be dirty again, the rich are going to get richer and the poor are going to get poorer. Well, what I would like to say to you is, it's okay to think that way, but then you need to change your thinking because if we don't start doing anything, no one else will. Because you have to be the change, as Gandhi said, as you heard before, you have to be the change that you want to see in the world. And if you don't do it, no one else will. And the world is just going to remain like that. It's just going to be a big garbage dump. It's just going to be more laborers, more poor people, people dying of hunger all around you. There's this one saying that I remember, and it's been in my head for a long, long time too. 
is that the only reason for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I'll remember that for the rest of my life and I hope you guys do too. Well, I'd like to end my talk with this short quote by I think a band almost everyone loves. Coldplay? It's, it's, a, it's a lyric from this song called Fix You. It's, it says, if you never try, you'll never know. Well, I would like everyone here to go out and give it a try. It doesn't matter how you change the world. It could be feeding a, a dog or feeding the homeless or talking to someone or even getting to know them. You know, that helps in building this consciousness that the whole world is a family because we are citizens of India. We are inhabitants of Mother Earth as a whole. And if we don't change the world, no one else will. Thank you.